A wonderful Sabbath to you, our viewers. We thank you for joining us this Sabbath, and I trust that the Holy Spirit will continue to work on your heart. Today, we will be encouraged by the messages in song glorifying our Creator and by the preaching of God's Holy Word. May the blood of Christ draw you nearer to His bleeding side. Some say it rained, I don't know if it's true, but I could just imagine 10,000 angels cry, that could seem like rain to me and you. The angels all stood ready to take him from the tree. They waited for the words from his voice. And then he asked the Father, Why hast thou forsaken me? They watched the Savior die of his own choice. I've never seen ten thousand angels cry, but I'm sure. As we prepare to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord, I hope that you will remember what is found in Genesis 1 verse 31. It says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Remember that it is out of love for our Creator that we give willingly to him. May you give accordingly as he has blessed you with the details on your screen.
let us take time aside to seek the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for blessing us more than we deserve. Lord, as we see everything around us and the way that the world is going, we ask that you would forgive us for any sins that are hindering our prayers from entering into your holy presence. And Lord, we pray that you would bless the offerings that have been given and that you would continue to help those who are struggling with whatever addictions they have in their lives. Lord, we also ask that you would cleanse us and renew a right spirit within us through the righteousness of Christ and that you would speak to us in a personal way through your Holy Spirit and that you would anoint the lips of your servant who is preaching your word. May Jeremiah 1 verse 9 be fulfilled where you said that the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched my mouth and put his words in my mouth. Lord, I also ask that you would be with those viewers who are watching right now that they would be able to take heed and watch and pray. May you be able to bless each and every person, that they would be able to take something away from the message that is to be shared. And may your name be glorified. May you continue to help us to be content with what we have, for I ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and uh, welcome again to another presentation in this series, Watch and Be Ready. I trust that the Lord has been good to you and he has blessed you, he has kept you safe, even during this time of great uncertainty. And I thank the Lord for bringing us here to another message, and I know that the Lord will speak to us again. I encourage you, if you have your Bibles with you, to please open your Bible, follow along, and let's study together. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for giving us this time to open your word and to study. And Father, as we open your word, we we ask for your Holy Spirit to please give us guidance. We ask for your Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts and our minds. In Luke 24, 45, the Bible says, And open thee their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures and comprehend the Scriptures. So, Father, give us an understanding mind. May your Holy Spirit speak to every listener, to everyone listening to this message. And may your Holy Spirit give me the right words and may Jesus be lifted up, and we all be drawn closer to Christ. He increase, and I decrease. Thank you, Father. All these things I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The title for our message today is Escape to the Mountain. Escape to the Mountain. And if you have your Bibles with you, please... I ask you to turn with me to Matthew 6 and verse 6. Matthew 6 verse 6, this is what Jesus says. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. Jesus says here, in Matthew 6 and verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, is actually making a contrast between the way some of the Pharisees and the religious leaders, how they like to pray in the open places, how they like to pray to be seen, only to be seen by men, 
so that they receive the approval of men, so that men may think highly of them. But Jesus says, but when thou, you, when you pray, Jesus says, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, to thy Father, which is in secret. So Jesus is saying, enter into thy closet. Go into a private place. Go into a place where you can be alone. Go into a place where there are no distractions. There are so many distractions in this world today. There are so many even good things that appear to be good, but they are really distractions. So Jesus is saying, when you pray, go into the closet. Be on your own. Go into a secret place. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward thee openly. So let me read Matthew 6, verse 6 again. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, shut the door to the world, to the noises, to the crowd, to everything that is happening outside. Shut the door to whatever that is happening around you. Shut the door and pray to the Father, which is in secret. Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says this. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is the secret place of the Most High? Well, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, verse 6. Jesus just told us. When thou prayest, go thou into the what? Closet. Shut thy door. So the secret place of the Most High is the secret place of prayer. The secret place of the Most High is the secret place of prayer. And the Bible tells us in verse 2 of Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Why will I trust? How do I develop that trust? How do I de develop that confidence? How do I develop that faith? Because I am always in the secret place of prayer. Understand this, God's people. Because I am always in the secret place of prayer, I am developing that trust. I am developing that faith. And faith Faith is something that will be lacking in the last days. Because Jesus said in Luke 18, verse faith, Luke 18, verse 8, When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Jesus predicts and he knows that in the last days, people will be lacking in faith. There will be a faithless generation upon this earth. That's what Jesus said. And so, the Bible tells us here, that when I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, the secret place of prayer, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. The Bible continues, verse 3. The Bible says, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And verse 6 says this, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now I want us to focus on the word destruction in verse 6. Notice this. This is a blessing that comes from the place of prayer. This is a blessing that comes from abiding and dwelling in the secret place, in the secret chamber where I pour out my heart to God, where I commune with my Lord and Savior, where I talk to my God, where no one sees or hears or understands everything I say except Him alone. This is a blessing that comes from the secret place of prayer. Verse 6 tells us here, Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. There is destruction happening all around us. But if I'm always in the secret place of prayer, I am assured of God's protection. I am assured of God's care. I am assured of God's presence who will always be with me. That's what the Bible tells us. Because I am always in the secret place of prayer. And so, friends, today, listen carefully. Listen carefully. 
you and I need to be found in the secret place of prayer. As we continue coming down to verse 11, notice what verse 11 says. I'm picking out a few verses here. I'm coming down now to verse 11, Psalm 91. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Listen carefully, God's people. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 11. The, the, the pr protection of holy angels and the, and, the, and the protection and the care and the guardianship of holy angels is assured and is promised to God's people for those who always abide in the secret place of prayer. Who always dwell in the secret, secret place of prayer. You are assured of the protection of holy angels that excel in strength. The Bible tells us this. And I'd like us to keep that in mind as we continue in this message, Escape to the Mountain. I'd like us now to please turn our Bibles. Let's come to Genesis chapter 19. And if you have Genesis 19, come with me to verse 20. Genesis 18, verse 22. Now, in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 22, we'll come to 19 later. In Genesis 18 verse 22, this is what happens. There are two men. They come, and somehow they come, come across paths with Abraham. They cross paths with Abraham. And Abraham, because hosp hospitality is such a big deal in those days, he took them. He did what he did. He welcomed them into his home, cooked a nice meal for them. And these two men were there, not knowing all along the terrible and the awful mission which God had sent them to do. The Bible tells us here in Genesis chapter 18, verse 22, the Bible says this, When the men had left Abram and they went on their way, they were heading towards Sodom. They were heading toward that wicked city because God had sent them on a very awful, terrible mission. Genesis 18, verse 22, take note, the Bible says here, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. Now notice the last part of verse 22. Notice carefully the last part of verse 22. It says here, But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Listen, God's people. Let me read it again. Genesis 18 verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Do we see what the Bible is saying? After the men had been finished with, finished with Abraham, the Bible says they went towards Sodom. They went towards Sodom because God had sent them on this terrible mission. And the Bible says when they went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. They went towards Sodom. Now the Bible says that Abraham, that Abraham stood before the Lord. What does it mean when the Bible says that Abraham stood yet before the Lord? Well, the Bible will explain to us in the next verse. Verse 23, Genesis 18, verse 23. This is what the Bible says. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked. Now this is very interesting. Listen here, God's people. Listen here. The Bible says that the two men were sent. They were sent by God. And they went off on their mission to the city. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So you had these two men who later the Bible tells us clearly were holy angels in human form. They left and they departed towards Sodom. Abraham is now there. And listen, Abraham is alone with God. Abraham is alone with God. And the Bible says he stood yet before the Lord. And what does verse 23 say? What does verse 23 say? Verse 23, the Bible says, And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? This is what God is telling Abraham. You know what that tells us? That means God had revealed to Abraham what he was about to do. Imagine that. Imagine if God was to tell you what he is about to do. People fear tomorrow. People don't know what's coming ahead. People fear even the next hour. 
Because there's violence everywhere. People don't know where the next meal is coming from. People fear and dread the future. But Abraham, the Bible says, God had given him the privilege of knowing what was about to happen. God told him, God showed him that the destruction of the city was very nigh. That's why Abraham said, Lord, are you really going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? Why did Abraham say this? Because it had been revealed to him even before the city was destroyed. Even before the city was destroyed. Now, has God given us something to tell us what is going to happen tomorrow? While the whole world is in Sodom and Gomorrah rejoicing and singing and doing all kinds of sins, has God given to his people a guide to tell us what is going to happen tomorrow? Yes, he has. The Bible tells us clearly what will happen tomorrow. Listen, if you are a child of Abraham, you are not in darkness. God revealed it to Abraham. God will really reveal it to us, to his people. So we are not in darkness. We must know what will happen tomorrow. We must know what is coming ahead. So we are not left in darkness, God's people. And so the Bible tells us, so the Bible tells us that God revealed to Abraham. Now when God revealed to Abraham, listen to what Abraham did. What did Abraham do? The Bible says again in verse 23, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? What did Abraham do? Abraham started talking with God. Abraham started talking with God. Why was he talking with God? Why was he concerned about the righteous who are living among the wicked in Sodom? Because Abraham had family members in that wicked city. Listen, Abraham had family members living in that wicked city. His nephew Lot and his family, they were all there. He was concerned about the welfare of his family. And he knew destruction was coming. And he said, God, are you really going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? He was concerned about his family members. Listen here. So what did Abraham do? He started talking to God. He started pleading to God. Now listen, what is that? That is prayer. Listen, when I talk to God about something that concerns me, that is prayer. And who was there to listen to Abraham? Nobody. Not even the angels. They were sent away. It was just Abraham and God. Listen. When Abraham was talking to God, pleading for Lot and his family, Abraham was in the secret place of the Most High. Abraham was dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. That place the psalmist talks about in Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And he was pleading for that shadow of the Almighty to come upon his people, to come upon Lot and his family. And he was pleading and he was praying. So listen here, God's people. When the Bible tells us that Abraham stood yet before the Lord, that simply means Abraham was in the place of prayer. Abraham was in the place of prayer, and he was pleading. Now, as we continue, notice this. You can read it during your own time, but what you will see is this. He asked God, if there are 50 righteous people, can you spare the city? Yes, I'll spare the city. If there are 45, can you spare the city? Yes, I'll spare the, I'll spare the city. What about 40? What about 30? What about 30? What about 20? What about 10? And God said, yes, if there are 10 righteous people, I'll spare the city. Coming toward the end of the chapter. And notice this. Notice what the Bible says here in verse 33. Verse 33, the last verse. It says, and the Lord went his way. Notice the words. Notice an important word in verse 33. After Abraham had finished talking with God, verse 33 says, and the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communing. Notice that? What does the Bible say? The Bible says, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing. Do you see that word communing? That means when Abraham was talking to God, he was communing with him. Isn't that what happens when I pray? When you're in the secret place of prayer, and you're pouring your heart to, God, heart to God, and you're talking to God, you are in communion with Him. That's what Abraham was doing. Abraham was in communion with his God. 
Abraham was in the secret place of prayer. He was communing with his God. That's what the Bible says here in verse 33. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing, the Bible says. Now, I'd like us please to come now to chapter 19. The Bible tells us here, the next, next chapter. When the two men were sent and they went on their terrible mission. Listen carefully, God's people. This is what is exactly happening on planet Earth right now. People are playing. People are building. People are going about their daily business. Not aware that destruction is about to come upon this earth. And the two men went to the city. The Bible says here in verse 1 and verse 2 of Genesis chapter 19. The Bible says this, and there came, and there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early. And go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Do you see that? When the two men came, they came and they were on the streets. They were on the streets. And Lot came. Lot found them. Lot saw them. And Lot said, Come, come, come to my house. Stay with me. They said, No, we're going to stay in the street. But the Bible tells us that Lot insisted. Lot insisted. He said, Come, please, come and stay. And so the two men followed Lot, and they went and they stayed. Not knowing the terrible mission. Not knowing why God had sent them to that city. That was the last night of the city of Sodom. That is a solemn thought, God's people. That was the last night of the city of Sodom. And the Bible tells us here, the Bible tells us here, as we continue, in verse 5, Verse 5, the Bible says this. You see, what had happened was this. Before we come to verse 5. When the two men went to abide at Lot's house, when they went to stay with Lot, the men of the city noticed that there were these two visitors who had been lodging with Lot. And Lot took them to his house. And verse, verse 5 tells us this. It says here, and they called unto Lot. This is the man of the house. The man of, of, the, of the city, I should say. Verse 5, the Bible says, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. That we may know them carnally. And so the Bible says that these men, the men of Sodom, they were exceedingly wicked. They were so exceedingly wicked. They actually fit the description of Romans 1, 26, 27, where it talks about men departing from the natural Nat natural feelings and affections for women, they go after men, branding their lust for one another. God's people, homosexuality is not something new. It is not a new phenomenon. It was there in the city of Sodom. It was there in the city of Sodom. Listen here. When you see things like homosexuality, gay rights, lesbian rights, when people start talking about these things and preaching these things and championing these things, you know that this world is ripe for destruction. You know that the end is nigh. And nobody will know it because they don't care what God says. But just as Abraham knew it, God's people will know it. Amen. God's people will know it. We are never kept in darkness. And so they came and they surrounded the house. They surrounded the house. They said, bring out those two men. We want to know them carnally, the Bible says. And Lot came out and wanted to give them his daughters. We don't want your daughters. They insisted on the men. They wanted to have the men. In fact, the Bible says they were so insisting, they even almost broke the door. They even almost broke the door to come into the house. Listen. 
the lust of the flesh, the sexual perversion has reached, has reached such boundaries that is unthinkable. It's unthinkable. God's people, this is what is happening in the world today. This earth is ripe and ready for destruction. Listen. It's ripe and ready for destruction. How much more? You and I, God's people, we should always retreat to the secret place of the Most High. You and I, we should be found in the secret place of prayer like Abraham was. Abraham was high on top of the hills. He was looking down and he saw the cities of the plain and he knew what was about to happen. So the Bible tells us here. So the Bible tells us here. Last part of verse 9, it says, they came near to break the door. Can you imagine that? Verse 12 and 13 says, And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law? This is the, 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 the two angels who are in human form. Now listen, they say to Lot, This is the time. This is the time. The very fact that these two angels were in human form and men came and tried to abuse them sexually and do what they wanted to do to please themselves, it showed that the city of Sodom had reached the point of no return. It had reached the point of no return. The patience of God had been exhausted. And God is about to do the terrible work which he's about to do. God is about to destroy sinners, rebellious people. Now God does... God takes no pleasure in that. It's absolutely necessary, but he takes no pleasure. Ezekiel 33, 11 says, say unto them. What does it say? It says, the Lord takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye. Oh, why will ye die, O house of Israel? Listen, listen carefully. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But it is absolutely necessary for the wages of sin is death. So the Bible tells us here, the Bible tells us here, in Genesis 19, as we continue, the two men, now revealing the terrible mission, revealing the terrible mission, and they said to Lot, they said to Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Bring them out of this place. Now listen to verse 13. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. They're mixing no words, God's people. The Lord hath sent us to destroy this place. Wickedness had grown so much. God saw it fit to destroy the city. That's what happened. That's what happened, God's people. God saw it fit to destroy the city, the Bible says. And then, the Bible says here. And what happened next? Well, this is what happened next in verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Listen. This is life-saving message. Follow instructions if you want to be saved. This is a matter of life and death. Listen, Lord. Listen carefully. Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. If you wish to stay in the city, you will be consumed. The Bible says, and while he lingered, verse 16, the man laid hold upon his hand. It is as if Lot was reluctant to go. It was as if his wife was reluctant to go. So, but the Bible says in verse 16, while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says that the angels took, took Lot, took his wife, took the two daughters, and brought them forth, held them by the hand, took them out while they were lingering. Why? Why? Because listen here. Abraham had been praying for Lot's family. Abraham was in the secret place of the Most High. And he received assurance 
that Lot and his family would be shielded and protected. And while they were lingering and holding back and reluctant, the angels took them and they brought them out of the city. Bible says here, took them out of the city. And then <clears throat> the Bible goes on to say this in verse 17. Notice what the angel said. Notice carefully, verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay in all the plain. What did the angel say? The angel's instruction is very clear. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Escape. Keep going forward and just going forward. When you hear the destruction happening behind you, just keep going forward. Look not behind thee. And notice this, God's people. Do not miss this. Please do not miss this. Notice what the Bible says. And notice where it says here. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. What did he say? Escape to the mountain. Escape to the mountain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Lest thou be consumed. What do you notice about the mountain? In Matthew chapter 14. And in Mark chapter 6, and in Luke chapter 9, the Bible will tell you that after Jesus had fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, the Bible says he went up to the mountain. He went up to the mountain to do what? To pray. He went up to the mountain to pray. The Bible says here, the Bible says here, in Mark chapter 6, verse 45, 46, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when, and when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. The same story in Matthew 14 says, in verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Do you see that? God's people, do you see that? This is the same thing we see with Abraham. The same thing you see with Jesus. Jesus went to the mountaintop. When he was on the mountaintop, he was always praying. He made the mountains a place of prayer. The mountains were a place of refuge. The mountains were a place of escape. He was crowded by all kinds of people all the time. And so he needed to go aside. He needed to be alone with his father. He needed to have communion just as Abraham had communion with God. Jesus needed to have communion. And he escaped to the mountains. And that's where he would pray. That's where he would have communion with his father. And the Bible tells us here that the angels, they said to Lot and his wife and the family, they said, escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. God's people that is the place of safety. That is the place where God's protection is assured. Listen here. Escape to the mountain. Mountains are the place of prayer. Listen. I need to be always in the place of prayer. That is my mountaintop. That is the place where I receive. Where I receive strength. I receive power. I receive faith. That is the place of prayer. The mountaintop experience. I need to have that experience, God's people. Do not worry about what's happening on the plains. I need to come aside, go up to the mountains. On the plains, there is wickedness in the cities. But on the mountaintops, that's where God wants to speak to me. I must come aside. I must go to the mountaintop. I must go to the mountaintop. That is the secret place of prayer. That is the secret place of prayer. What does the Bible tell us here? As we bring this message to a close. Verse 24 and 26. Listen to this. Listen to this, God's people. As Lot and his family, they went up to the mountain, which is the only place of safety. As they went up, God was about to do what he was about to do. Verse 24, 26 tells us this. It says here, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and that which grew upon the ground. Now notice verse 26. But his wife 
looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Listen, God's people. Her story is in the sacred records for your benefit and for my benefit. The Bible says that she looked behind him and she became a pillar of salt. In a future study, we'll look more into why exactly she looked behind to see, look back at the city. But listen, she looked behind him, the Bible says, and she became a pillar of salt. Listen to this. Listen carefully. Satan can say all kinds of things. You make the choice. You make the decision. But if you yield to what Satan is saying, if, you, if your heart yields to, to, the, to the, all the enticing things of this world, listen here. Just as he did to Lot's wife, he will do to you and I. What did he do to Lot's wife? Listen, God's people. Satan prevented Lot's wife from going to the mountain. Satan prevented Lot's wife from going to the mountain. And that's what Satan wants to do today. The mountain is the place of prayer. The mountain is the place of refuge. The mountain is the place where I commune with God, like Abraham communed with God, like Jesus communed with God. That is the only place of safety. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 24, and he said this, he said, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, the next verse he said, Flee to the mountains. Flee to the mountains. That is the place of safety. Jesus said, flee to the mountains. Listen, that has a very significant spiritual meaning. The mountains do not necessarily mean the literal mountains. It is talking about the place of prayer. And I appeal to you. What is your worry? What is your situation? What is your problem? Listen here. Come to the place of prayer. Come to the secret place of the Most High. And abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God promises to take care of all our needs, of all our worries. When destruction is happening everywhere, God is our refuge and our strength because we are always in the secret place of prayer. Remember that. And as we come to a close, I'd like to read here. The Bible says this in verse 27. Notice this. Another important point. Very significant point, Genesis 19, verse 27. The Bible says this. And Abraham, notice, after the destruction, Sodom was already burning. Lot and his family were delivered because Abraham was in the secret place of prayer. So I'm encouraging you. If you're already on the mountaintop praying, keep at it. Stay there. But if you have a loved one who is still in the city, who is still attracted to the things of this world, be like Abraham. Continue pressing. Continue praying for him, for her. Listen. Verse 27. The Bible says this. Verse 27, it says this. Notice, after she turned around, she became a pillar of salt. Verse 27. Notice what it says about Abraham. And Abraham got up early in the morning and did what? To where? To the place where he what? Stood before the Lord. Do you see that? That's exactly what we see in Genesis 18. In Genesis 18, Abraham stood before the Lord. He was in the secret place of prayer. After his prayer has been answered, and his, and, and his relatives, Lot and his family, were delivered, even after the prayer was answered, he did not cease from praying. He still stood before the Lord. Listen meaning we must always be in the secret place of prayer. When God answers our prayers. God delivers us. He protects us. He provides for us. We must still continue to be in the secret place of prayer. Look everywhere all around you. It's so bad. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get better, but it will get worse first. We must always, always be on the mountaintop of prayer. Come aside. Go to the mountaintop of prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, we know it. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray always, pray without ceasing. Satan prevented Lot's wife from going to the mountain. And there was one other mountain. There was one other mountain. Satan tried to prevent Jesus 
from going to Mount Calvary. He tried to prevent Jesus because he knows if Jesus goes to Mount Calvary, his power will be broken. His kingdom will be finished. But praise God, Jesus made it to Calvary. Thank the Lord, he made it to Calvary. He died and he took my place and he took your place. God's people, today, today, God invites us to come to the secret place of prayer. If you've never put time aside, he invites us to come to the secret place of prayer. All of heaven, the power and the resources of omnipotence of heaven is for you and I. But I must come to the secret place of prayer so I can have that power, that victory in my life. If that is what you desire, I pray you make that decision today. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you that in your word you've shown us that if we could come to the secret place of prayer, to the mountaintop of prayer, we will be in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. No matter the destruction, no matter the pestilence, no matter what comes upon this earth, you promise your protection for your people. And I pray for every man and woman listening to this message that you will bless him, that you will bless her, that you will keep your people safe, that we will be praying always because we know things are not getting, going to get any better. We, will, we must be praying always, trusting you, placing our lives into your hands. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I need Thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like Thine can peace afford. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee every hour. I need Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, stay Thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when Thou art nigh. Savior, I come to Thee. Oh, I need Thee. Oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Let's pray. Our Father, Father, I pray for every man and woman listening to this message that you will speak to their hearts in spite of the troubles and anxiety and the worries they're experiencing. You touch them in all the different circumstances of their lives. Help them to know that you long to spend time with them in communion with you. Help us, Father, to always be in the secret place, dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. And we know when your people are faced with all kinds of troubles and persecutions and things that are soon to come upon this earth, you promise us your protection. Thank you. May you receive the glory and the honor. We place our lives into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen.
This is a Korobusia Seventh-day Adventist Church media production.